Hello, my name is Ripley. Welcome to the video. What's up schmucks, I hope you're well. So a little behind the scenes before we get started. This Coraline video was meant to be my 2022 Halloween special, but I ended up messing up my scheduling and I started editing this way too late and there was no way I was gonna be able to finish it in time. Plus I started getting carried away with the edit and I genuinely think this might be one of my best videos. So I wanted to give it time to bake and truly make it the best it could be. So instead of a mediocre Halloween special like planned, you're getting a really high effort release. So I hope you enjoyed Enjoy it. I didn't want to remake a ton of this video, so there are mentions of like Halloween, the Halloween special, and other things like that, because this was recorded before Halloween, so just ignore all that stuff, don't even worry about it. Anyway, enough jabbering, let's get into it. My original plan this year was to review a different horror movie each week in the month of October, like I do in December for Christmas. However, early in October this year, my town in Florida got absolutely walloped by Hurricane Ian. I was very lucky to have sustained minimal damage to my house and my neighborhood as a whole because a lot of other people weren't so lucky. However, the biggest thing this stupid storm impacted was my ability to produce content because as we all know, a lack of roast turkey content actually causes global warming and world hunger. So I didn't want to waste any time and I got right back to work as soon as the storm was over. I started working on scripts, I started brainstorming ideas for videos, and ultimately I spent a lot of time doing that and not a lot of time watching things to review. But I did manage to get something done. And so today we are going to do a big singular Halloween special with the 2009 movie Coraline. A ton of people told me this movie was peak cinema and something that genuinely messed with them as children, which did nothing but make me want to watch it. So I grabbed the Blu-ray, popped it into my PlayStation, I made a Pop-Tart and I sat down and I watched Coraline. I also recorded my reaction to this movie, and throughout the review, we'll cut back to it so I can use it to reinforce points. Bo Burnham be like. But as for the review itself, I'm gonna structure it a bit differently. Normally I run through the plot and review it as I go, but because I was the only person who had never seen this movie until a few days ago, I figured that everybody's already seen this movie so I could speak about the specific things without recapping the movie as we go. Alright, let's do it. Let's review Coraline, released in 2009 and written and directed by Henry Selleck. Coraline is a stop-motion animated movie directed by Henry Selleck, written by Henry Selleck, and adapted from the novella Coraline, written by Neil Gaiman. But for the movie, Coraline is about Coraline, voiced by Dakota Fanning. Coraline and her parents move into this apartment complex. It's not clearly stated why, but the implication is that it's for her parents' jobs. All seems to be relatively normal aside from the other tenants, but one night, Coraline is drawn to this door in the wall. She crawls through to discover her apartment, but this apartment is inhabited by different versions of her parents, nicer versions. Coraline is infatuated with this world and continuously visits it night after night as she begins to prefer it to the real world. However, it eventually becomes known that Coraline's other mother wishes for Coraline to stay in this world, but in order to do so, the other mother must sew buttons onto Coraline's eyes. For you, our little doll. Black is traditional. But if you'd prefer pink, or vermilion, or chartreuse. <sighs> Though you might make me jealous. No way! You're not sewing buttons in my eyes! Oh, but we need a yes if you want to stay here. The big reveal is that Other Mother is some type of entity that lures children into the simulated world by showing them a superior version of their life and then sews buttons onto their eyes. She gets the children to role play as her own children, but once she's done with them, she eats their souls. So we let her sew the buttons. She said that she loved us, but she locked us here and ate up our lives. Yeah, I see why this really messed with people when they were kids. So Coraline works to escape her clutches and ends up locking her away in her little pocket dimension and throwing away the key. That's a pretty summarized version of the plot, which now allows me to review the movie and break it all down. I think Neil Gaiman really summed up a thought I had for every second of every minute of this movie's runtime. I think the thing that impresses me most, just because it was the thing that I hadn't realized absolutely everything you see on the screen somebody's made. This movie is a technical masterpiece. That's obvious from the cold open, but it really becomes apparent once you see some behind the scenes clips on how it all came together. For example, while watching the movie, I had this question. 
Like, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm sure, like, I know. Like, I'm sure if it was all shown or explained to me, it would all make total sense. But, like, that, like, is that, is that, like, actual, like, I don't know, like, um, epoxy or, you know, resin or something? Or is that CG, you know? I don't know. Do they implement CG with this kind of, with stop motion? I don't know, you know? It's just it's so fascinating to me. And then, after looking into the behind the scenes, I was presented with an answer. I'm Brian McLean. And I'm Martin Meunier. And uh, we are basically in charge of what we call here the rapid prototyping department. We did a shower splattering on Coraline's head. So we created a whole series where all the strands hit her head. And we did it out of clear plastic again. Give him a patina so it looked like rusty water. And when you look at it, you could see the, the shower head starts. You can see all the little strands come out, and they kept going and going and going, and they merge with each other and they mingle together. They look incredible. So it was a really cool effect. This whole movie had me consistently in awe of what was happening on screen because I knew that all of it was handmade and animated, a tiny little movement at a time by a team of dedicated artists. An actor gives a performance in real time to create a performance in animation. If that character is happy or they're sad or they're frightened, you have to be in that mindset for like two weeks at a time. There's 24 frames per second. In each one of those frames, you will have to move maybe 20 little pieces, fingers and arms and legs and head and hair. You've got to keep focused or it's not going to work out properly. The whole time I was watching Coraline, I had this feeling of bewilderment that all of this was done by hand, one frame at a time, and just how much sheer work that must have been. I absolutely adore the animation styles of Pixar and Sony Animations and Blue Sky Studios, but this level of dedication to craft and this level of meticulous detail is just so extraordinary and mind-boggling to me, but all in the right ways. Stop motion has always been something I massively respect, from older movies using it to movies like Coraline and to even small-scale creators like Forest Fire. Whoa, death of the family Joker. <laughs> Joker's ho! Stop motion animation just tickles the right part of my brain, and Henry Selick and his team were able to use it to portray some of the most sensational visuals I think I've ever seen in an animated movie. Henry Selick says that making a movie like this is like making a movie one molecule at a time, and I think that's a perfect way to describe what this looks like. We live in an era now where CGI is so prevalent, we no longer watch movies and say to ourselves, Wow, how did they do that? Or at least, I don't. I remember saying that about Alien, Aliens, Jaws, Jurassic Park, Terminator, Star Wars, and tons of other movies I watched as a kid. But these days, the answer is more likely CGI, or it's obvious that the answer is CGI. So it makes asking the question of, how did they do that? Obsolete. Hello, Rose Tricky cutting in from the future. There's some stuff going on outside my house. I hope that doesn't come into the audio. But I just wanted to say that this statement that I said here, listening back to it, it sounds like I'm demeaning and diminishing the work of very hardworking CGI artists. Not the case. CGI and all that goes into it is still remarkably impressive. And I am always blown away by the visuals that they are able to create. And it's a shame that they work in an industry where they are not appreciated enough for the hard work that they do. And I did not want to contribute to that. The way I should have worked that is that stop motion and the elements that go into stop motion to me personally are more interesting and a little more impressive but again i do not want to diminish the work that underappreciated cgi artists put into the movies that we watch and enjoy and consume constantly so i just wanted to clear that up i'm leaving now enjoy the rest of the video but I think Coraline is the first movie in a very long time to make me actually ask that question. This movie is just a visual feast. Henry Selleck be like, Everything I do is visionary. Every single frame of painting made exactly how I wanna make it. But beyond an amazing art style and jaw-dropping stop-motion animation, this movie has quite a fair bit going for it. It's characters for one. I love the characters in this movie. I thought this was a fun cast of kooky characters who all got a good laugh or two out of me. The standouts being Other Mother, the Keith David Cat, <laughs> Meow. You know they pay me to do this stuff. <laughs> and Coraline herself. Other Mother is really well performed by Terry Hatcher. She has such a sweet and kind charm to her for most of the movie, but becomes so seamlessly terrifying in an instant. It's really amazing, but it never feels jarring or like it's come out of left field or anything. Like I said, it's pretty seamless. I also had this reaction once or twice. Dude, that oh, really? mom is... Uh, you've, you've done so much already. She's You're packing right? a dump truck, homie. And I... I can't deny it any longer. Other mother is bad, bro. 
Keith David is always good. That's not news to anyone. Naturally, you'll forget you saw them. Along with, in order of national embarrassment, the Truman Cocaine Lounge, the McKinley Hooker Dump, and the Lincoln Slave Coliseum. He didn't free them all. And I really enjoyed him as the cat. His line delivery is just fantastic. He kind of reminds me of the cat from Alice in Wonderland, which is definitely deliberate, as there are a handful of Alice in Wonderland parallels with this story. Anyway, I love Keith David. I see him as the less scary version of Tony Todd. Tony Todd's voice is booming and intense and provokes fear. Helen, I came for you. Keith David sounds like a nice uncle who gives you money every time he sees you. And the other standout character to me was Coraline. That sounds exciting! In the moment while watching the movie, I said this. Yeah, Dakota Fanning is very good in this. She's very, uh, like, the way she delivers her lines, she can be very charming and innocent, but she can also be very sassy and mean, and I don't know, she, like, handles that very well, I think. So, her performance I'm very much enjoying. And all of that rings true a few days after watching the movie. Dakota Fanning is very good in this role, but I really love how Coraline is written. She's like your average 11 year old girl, you know, headstrong, sassy, mean. But this is also a good rendition of the trope, mature for their age, where she's very resourceful, she's cunning, she's clever. I also really like how she's animated. She waves her arms around when she's talking, which is something I do, so I like that. Then where's the secret well? Okay, I love that. I love how sassy and animated she is. I love that. That's great. Characters are terrific in this movie, but this movie also has a handful of story elements I really loved, but it also has a few that I took issue with. Uh-oh, it's time for Rose Turkey to tell you your favorite movie from your childhood didn't impress him because he's a big old grump who hates everything. Oh boy. So starting off positive, I love the parallel of Coraline's actual parents and her other parents and the way her other parents are impacted by her desires. When we first meet Coraline's parents, they're cold and neglectful and rude and pretty off-putting. Their only real concern is their jobs and their time. But when Coraline goes and meets with her other mother and other father, they're the opposite. They're obsessed with her. Their world revolves around her. They make her good food. They spruce up her room. They attend to her in every way. Eventually, this appealing to Coraline agenda goes too far, but I like how other mother is kind of like Pennywise in a way. Pennywise lures children in, scares them real good, and then eats them. Other mother lures children in, wins them over, and then eats them. There's a few extra steps there though, like how other mother wants an actual child to love for a while before eating them. But still, the end game is pretty much the same here. So at one point, other mother locks Coraline's actual parents away, which is done to get us ready for the third act, but also to accentuate the theme of be grateful for what you have. Now here's where my problem comes in. Coraline's parents are not presented in a nuanced or layered way. They just kind of suck. They don't suck because of reasons Coraline doesn't understand or because there's a misunderstanding between them. Her parents are neglectful, cold, and rude. But then, right before they're taken away, they each get a little moment where they're they're kind of nice to Coraline. Well, I guess I'll see you around, you dizzy dreamer. Dad, I'm not five anymore. You wanna come along? You can pick out something you like. Oh, like the gloves. <sighs> Look, Coraline, if things go well today, I promise I'll make it up. I really like the idea that maybe Coraline's parents are in some kind of situation, a financial situation, whatever it might be, and they just haven't told her. So her parents are short-tempered and upset, and she thinks they are short-tempered and upset with her, when in reality, they're just upset with the situation. I love that. But the movie doesn't do anything with that. The movie doesn't say that's what the case is. The movie barely implies that that maybe is what the case is. It feels like such a missed opportunity, and so I think that maybe there are parts of this movie that could have been shortened and made a little more concise so we could have had time to explore the relationship between Coraline and her actual parents. The theme and the message of this movie is for Coraline to be grateful for what she has with her real parents instead of what she would have with her other parents. But the movie doesn't spend enough time with Coraline and her actual parents for me or anyone else to really care about that. All the movie shows me is that Coraline's parents are pretty neglectful, really off-putting, and all around pretty rude. Rude, and they don't show me much of anything else, so why would I want her to be with them? Why would I want that for her? Yeah, I guess it's better than being with a spider demon, but is this really what I should want for this protagonist? I think the movie should have dedicated a lot more time to Coraline and her actual parents, so that way the message in the theme makes more sense than it does. Coraline settling for a mom who barely does the bare minimum just isn't the poignant arc the movie wants it to be. Another thing I had a slight issue with was the plot and the pacing, but also not too much of a problem 
My main issue is how the conflict of this movie isn't really presented until about halfway through the movie. Like Coraline is just exploring the parallels and differences of this else world and dipping back and forth between the two realms and all is well and then halfway through the movie the conflict kicks in when other mother is revealed to be evil. We legit go half the runtime without a clear end goal for the story or the plot. What is the journey? What is at stake? What are the risks befalling our protagonists? What are we doing here? Who am I? Why do I make these videos? Is anybody watching? Does anyone care? Should I stop this bit? Where do I? And while I didn't love this, I also didn't totally hate it. Like I said, this movie is a stunner and I like looking at it at all times. So while the plot is kind of meandering for a large portion of the movie, I did enjoy what I was actually seeing. Also, the movie uses this time where the plot doesn't actually advance to introduce and build up those fun characters I was talking about. So like I said, it's not awful or anything. The final thing I want to talk about is how scary this movie is. I mean, for a movie shown to children, this is pretty intense. I'll give you to the count of three. One, two, Not only in the scare department, there's some things in here that I was surprised could actually be in a movie you would show to children. This is a kid's movie? Good gravy. How did, how did they get away with this? They added jiggle physics and stuff, man. How, how did they get away with this? I mean, the concept of an otherworldly monster impersonating a version of your mom only to sew buttons onto your eyes and freaking eat you is scary enough, but the imagery in the third act of this movie is quite unsettling. The other mother's final form is monstrous, bug-like but still fairly human, and the exposed spine sticking out of her back, ugh, no way man, did not like that at all. I would have hated this movie as a child. As a kid, I was a coward. If I saw even a frame of a scary movie, I'd be having nightmares, man. I was not built for scary stuff. So seeing this would not have been good for my mental well-being. Yeah, as a child, I would not have watched this. I would not have enjoyed this as a child, I would have turned this off long ago, and I would not have gotten to this point, and if I had, this would have freaked the hell out of me. No, 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 no. I said in my Nightmare Before Christmas review that the movie freaked me out as a kid and I never finished it because of how wacky and abstract the animation was, so something like this would have severely messed with my brain. All that said, I absolutely love the scary elements in the third act. I think the movie builds to it in a satisfying way with wacky and creative visuals the whole movie that then pay off with some really creepy visuals in the end. The very, very last thing I want to mention is I had a friend text me when I found out I was going to review this movie and they were scared I was going to hate it and be super harsh on it when I reviewed it, which is really hurtful. Does everybody think I just hate everything? While Turkey is a hater of almost every movie and TV show ever, sometimes he does like certain things. See? Thank you, Ridley. So Coraline. It's really good. It's an absolutely gorgeous movie with breathtaking visuals, an amazing art style, mind-boggling animation, wonderful characters brought to life by wonderful performances, and really solid creepy stuff at the end. However, I did feel that the pacing and the plot wasn't entirely up to snuff, and the theme of be grateful for what you have was poorly realized. And while I like this movie quite a bit, I do feel like I'm missing something from it, but that's definitely because I'm watching it now. I'm coming at this movie as a depressed college student and not a child who might have grown up on this movie and had it affect them in ways that would really resonate with them. I came to this movie too late for it to have that effect on me, but I did really like it. And I totally understand why this is a classic and something that rooted itself into the minds of children the world over. Henry Selleck's movies may have plots and themes that don't knock my socks off, but good gravy did the visuals blow me away. And now I'm definitely looking forward to checking out Wendell and Wild. Maybe I'll review that one too and have a little trilogy of Henry Selleck movie reviews. But anyway, hit that like button if you liked the video. Give it a big old like hit that subscribe button if you um if you um want to i don't know just hit the button man i got nothing anyways it would appear my time here is up i hope you enjoyed the video thank you for watching and have a fantastic day this concludes the video